Hello and welcome to the first of a series of demonstrations of the functionality of SecureCAD. In this first demo we will be showing you the most basic features. So we start with the main user interface which you can see on the screen. In this central pane here we have a view of a model of an IT system. The view is not the whole of the model but enough to show the main elements and small enough to show them on the screen. Essentially we have an attacker at the top of the model or as a connection to a Google Chrome browser, which is running on a Linux workstation, which is connected to the internet, and then to a router with a firewall, and then an office network, on which there is a Windows server host, which is connected to a data store, and the server also hosts an Oracle database service. Our attacker has a connection through the Google Chrome browser, through this data flow, the Oracle database and for the purposes of this demonstration what is of interest to us is whether or not the attacker can compromise the sensitive data in our data store. I won't go into details here about how we create the model but in brief I just drag out object types from this library here onto the screen. I've made connections between them and set defensive properties. I've also drawn from this library down here of customized SecureCAD components, which is just small collections of the base object types customized to a particular type of software product. If I click on one of these objects, you'll see some more detail emerges in the panes on the bottom left. You can see which other objects it is connected to. And it also gives me the option of entering in capital or operational expenditure i.e. the costs of creating and maintaining the object. Having clicked on this object type, you can see up here in the top right, we now have a list of attack types which are applicable to the host object. Won't go into full details of these either here, but they are detailed in the SecuriCAD user manual in a section on SecuriLang, which is the meta model defining object types, the connections permitted between them, the attack steps, and the defensive attributes that you will see in the model. If I click on the defenses tab here up at the top right, I now get a list of the defense attributes that are applicable to a host. You can see that we have a set of default values. These are chosen on the basis of the ones which Forseti believes are most commonly applied in practice, rather than those which we think are necessarily the best or the worst. You have the option of changing from the defaults by clicking on the tabs here. So for example, I could change the hardening from off to on, or I could set it as a probability between naught and one. I'm going to leave it at the default value, so I'll switch it back to unset. Now the wonderful thing about SecuriCAD is that having captured in our model this level of detail of our IT system, from the semantics behind that model, SecuriCAD can calculate the likely time for a skilled attacker to compromise this system. To invoke that calculation, I just come up to the top of the screen here and you'll see that button labelled Calculate and we press Calculate. SecuriCAD is now calculating the time to complete every possible attack path from the attacker's entry point to every object in the model. You can see that having completed the calculation, the objects are now coloured the darker the colour, the more likely it is that the attacker will be able to compromise that particular object. So I can see that the data flow is coloured brown because the attacker has direct access to it. If I click on the attack tab up here, you'll see that each attack step is now coloured according to its probability of being completed. I'm interested in the data store and the probability of an attacker being able to read its data. So I click on the data store down here and I click on the attack step read. And you now see a graph has appeared on the bottom right corner. Along the bottom of the graph, we have time to compromise. And on the vertical axis, we have the probability of success, i.e. compromising the data. So in the summary, you can see at the bottom that after 10 days of attacker effort, there's a 4% probability of the attacker having read that data store. And after 50 days of attacker effort, that probably has changed to 
If I want to see more details on just how the attacker might have reached that data store, I can see them up in this pane here. If I click on these buttons here, you can see the details of the attack path are expanded. So the last uh, attack step was to read the data store and the one penultimate one was compromising the Windows server. That was reached by a number of different paths and I can expand these further. If I click on this maximize button here, you can see a little more detail. And if I keep on clicking, you'll see these expanded. And you'll see in the graph at the bottom, the time to compromise graph uh, from that particular step to, uh, uh, to the starting point. If I go back to the earlier display, I now have the opportunity of another type of visualization. If I click on this button here, you'll be able to see another representation. In this attack graph, we have the attacker entry point here. And as before, the first point was to uh, connect to the Google Chrome client. This route down here is through the uh, application layer, which is on the right of our original diagram. You see the data flow connection to the Oracle database, getting, gaining user access, finding an exploit, deploying the exploit, a move on here, bypassing the uh, anti-malware defenses. Uh, over here, I've reached the Windows Server. I click on further, Windows Server deploy exploit. And finally, Windows Server Compromise and uh, Data Store Read. So that was uh, one of the major attack paths through uh, the network. These are uh, green shield-like icons. They denote uh, defensive properties that could have been switched on, that have not been switched on. And if they were, it would affect these uh, most, most critical paths. So for example, on the data store read, the final step is saying that the data store was not encrypted and clearly if it was encrypted, then it would affect the, uh, the attack path. This route at the top is through the infrastructure layer. As a few examples, you can see here the Linux workstation as a step there to bypass the anti-malware defenses. There's a step here, discovering an entrance through the firewall step here compromising the office network, um, identifying an unknown service on the Windows server and eventually again we get through to compromise the Windows server and read the data store. As I click on each of these uh, icons you can see the amount of time it takes to reach that, uh, that step. So this is the first step, time to compromise, zero days because it's a direct connection. As I click on through these, you'll see the amount of time increases. If I get to the point of deploying the exploit, you can see the time has jumped up to uh, 45 days and so forth. So here we have a, a basic uh, representation of our model and it's been analysed by SecuriCAD to give quite a detailed breakdown of the most critical paths. There are many more paths through the, uh, the model that are represented on this particular visualization, but this is some of the most, the most critical paths. So that completes our first introductory demo video of SecuriCAD. Thank you.